So in order to understand the elastic behavior of uh, different materials, uh, we have a very good tool that is graphical representation. So first I am drawing a graph and uh, of course if we want to study elastic behavior then uh, we have two different parameters. One is stress and other is strain. So we are going to draw a graph between stress and strain. So it is a typical graph and uh, it is not up to scale. Uh, what we can say uh, it is a schematic graph. So on uh, y axis we will represent stress and on x axis strain. Okay, stress symbol is sigma and measured in Pascals and strain symbol is epsilon and we know that uh, strain is unitless. Okay, before that just once again that uh, initially in the video I have shown you uh, in, in the introductory video of elasticity I have shown you this metal piece. It was at that time full, now broken down to half. Now if I apply some external deforming force onto it, for small forces, it tries to regain itself. Now you can see, if I increase the deforming force, then uh, you can see there is some permanent deformity, which is not being recovered. So earlier it was getting recovered but now it is not getting recovered. Later on if I increase it, see a permanent deformity and if I continuously deform it, now see uh, you can see how much uh, deforming force and that's how, how much uh, stress is there and now if I apply slight force that is that correspond to slight deformation even then it is broken down. So, in the same way, the variation of stress and strain goes. First, it remains proportional. Yeah, its slope. Its slope is determined by its uh, uh, elastic modulus. If I, I am talking about longitudinal stress and strain, then it will be its slope will be uh, stress upon strain that is Young modulus. So I'll divide this graph into few parts. First, OA. Now, what is this OA? It is actually proportional limit. So here, Hooke's law holds good. Stress is proportional to strain, directly proportional. Now, if we slightly increase stress, then we will have a point B, say B, and B is called elastic limit, or yield point. Now, there is some more deformity, but it is reversible when we remove uh, deforming force so its stress decreases and it again return to O but if we further increase there comes another point C well C don't have a particular name but uh, we'll call it permanent set point now these non-linear deformity are permanent, I have shown you. Okay, now beyond this, the graph dramatically changes to, actually it is not certain that it will always follow this path, but now there is uh, non-linearity, dramatic non-linearity, and now that metal is no longer elastic anymore. In fact, it shows plastic behavior. So, C to D, is plastic region. Beyond D, 
Now we have two options. Further, if we increase the stress, so it will deform, it will break beyond the fracture point, it will get fractured. And in fact, if beyond D, even if we decrease stress, that is if we decrease deforming force, still strain increases and fracture point, that's two, fracture point occurs. So it is up to you that beyond D, if you further increase stress, it will break. And even if you decrease it stress, but it has reached D, then it can be uh, it can uh, be fractured at any point after D. So there are some points, some points which uh, we have to mark. Like uh, if we go horizontally from B, so there is an interesting point. This point, this will be the value of stress corresponding to this point and uh, this value uh, oh sorry this value is called yield stress sigma y we can indicate it with sigma y and we call it yield stress or yield strength there's another point this peak point well, I have to extend this. Yeah. So, this is, this measure of stress is called ultimate strength. Ultimate, uh, I'll write it. I'm uh, writing it sigma, uh, sigma u and So it is called tensile strength. If we talk about um, uh, longitudinal stress, if we talk about Y in terms of Y, Young modulus, Young modulus is related to longitudinal stress and strain. That is why uh, symbolically I have written Y. It doesn't mean that it is equal to Y. This is the, the symbol to represent tensile strength. We can say this is stress as tensile strength if we are considering longitudinal terms. Or we can also call it ultimate material strength. Few other thing from this graph we can obtain that uh, slope slope of graph for from O to A only gives the value of Young modulus. Actually, mostly this graph is related to uh, longitudinal stress and strain only. That is why uh, it is coming out to be as Young modulus. Otherwise, we can say elastic constant. And second thing, what we can find is D is the measure of material strength, ultimate, oh my god, material strength. The question is, uh, is this graph is same for all the materials? No, it varies. It is just a tentative graph. It varies. These regions for different material is different. For uh, more elastic materials, for more el elastic metal, this will be steeper. For uh, more tensile strength, uh, if we talk about longitudinal uh, stress and strain, and in general, for more uh, strength of material this D point should be at higher position for different material if 
there is a material whose d point lies here for some other it is here for some other it is here so the material which has higher d point will be strongest stronger among these rest of others and uh, their elastic constant will be greater if they have more slope all right so now there is another category which is called elastomers uh, first i will give you the example famous example tissues of aorta uh, it is a vessel of heart and uh, other tissues also tissues of aorta and uh, other blood vessels and uh, rubber these are elastomers so in elastomers a dramatic a dramatic graph is there it looks like exponential yeah it is well actually it is not definitely exponential but uh, this graph shows that beyond a certain limit of stress there is uh, no more strain is there beyond a certain limit so they can withstand uh, a huge stress and uh, there will be a permanent strain it will not go beyond that so uh, these type of materials have more stretchability yeah of course we can't uh, mark any of these kind of points in this graph but this should uh, keep in mind that uh, this is how so that's all for today's video more to come you know, graphical representation and applications and uh, numericals also so lot more to come keep in touch